This video is going to cover a quick tutorial on the updates to Notability. So first of all, when you open up Notability, you'll notice it looks quite different. The settings gear is now on the top. If I click on that settings gear, some really important ones are your auto backup. You want to make sure that you're syncing to Google Drive. On the bottom here is how you can select those notes to be synced into Google Drive. So it could be a note or it could be PDF. You also want to make sure that your manage account, so that's where your Google Drive would be um, synced to, and your iCloud syncing is turned on so that this is backing up your notes each time. Your themes is here. This is how we changed from light, dark, and colorful subjects. Your document settings, uh, your typing settings, your handwriting settings, and then lock subjects and gestures are in here too. If you're a previous Notability user and you remember that little Zoom box that you could handwrite in, that appeared if you tapped and hold the screen or used the magnifying glass on the right in settings, you'll have to turn this tap and hold zoom mode on. And then it works the same. You just tap and hold the screen and that zoom box will show up. If I want to um, organize my notes here on the left, the first thing I'm gonna do is create some dividers. So next to subjects, I'm gonna hit the little plus symbol and I'm gonna add a divider. And we wanna do this for each of the classes that we're taking. So here's an algebra folder. Within that algebra folder, I'm going to put my subject. So let's say I'm going to call this chapter 1. Now that doesn't fall underneath algebra. So what I want to do is drag it underneath it by moving that little blue line. And now algebra can be collapsed. And that chapter 1 can go in there. I can do the same thing with, let's say, English 1. And maybe this time I want to add stories to this instead of by chapters. But either way, if you're adding those subjects underneath them, um, that's how you can keep it a little bit more organized. Now, if I wanted to create a new note on the top right is where we're going to create that. If I hit the three dots next to it, this is how I can select my view. So right now it's a grid. I can change this to a list and it will just give me the names of them. And if I wanted to select a note to do something like maybe duplicate it, on the bottom here, you'll see share, duplicate, favorite it, or delete it. When I'm ready to create a new note, I can just hit that plus symbol and it takes me to my blank note. On the bottom is the general settings of this note. So rule changes it to ruled paper, grid to grid paper, like graph paper, dot obviously to dot paper. If I want to import a document and I can import a document from any of the synced accounts I have, my iCloud Drive, somewhere on my files, or my Google Drive, I can pull it in that way. And if I want to scan a document, like a piece of paper, I want to scan, make it digital, I can do it there. Now the toolbar on the top starts with the pencil. These are some colors I already have. If I wanted to select a new color, I click on the pencil and I can swipe through the preset colors that are already there. Or I can add any color I want. There's even a dropper if I want to pick up a color from somewhere else. And now I've got that color saved in my toolbar and also if I click on that dot there's plenty more room for others. So if I want to write I can adjust the thickness of this by switching between these three and I can adjust the style by clicking all the way at the end. There's even a dashed line so if I wanted to draw a straight line I tap and hold it it becomes that straight dashed line or a dotted line. I can do all those things. Next to the pencil is a crayon. This is a little bit transparent. It's almost like writing with a um, lead pencil. I can select from these three, but I can also come back in and change it to any of those colors as well. Same adjustments as the one before it with the thickness. To the right of that is your highlighter. So you've got some general highlight colors in here that are preset for you, but you can also add to your highlight colors. You can adjust the thickness and the type there as well. Next to that is your eraser. Now your eraser has two choices on the right, whole and partial. If it's whole and I tap anywhere on the object, it will erase the whole thing. If it's partial and I just want to get rid of part of it, I can change it. Thickness can also be adjusted there. There's two ways to get to your text. The first is by tapping the T that's there. If I tap anywhere on my paper, it's going to bring my cursor all the way to the left. I can adjust the size and fonts from our shortcut menu, bold, italic, colors, uh, check boxes, bullets, indents, and alignment are there. If I want to save a special font that I tend to use a lot, I can 
pick that selected font. And then on the right hand side where that heart is, if I tap and hold that heart, it's going to create that font for me and it will default to one of those selected fonts. The other way to create a text box where it's not aligned on the left-hand side is to tap and hold anywhere on your screen and it will give you the opportunity to add in your text box from wherever you tapped on that screen. When you're in the text tool, if you hit the three dots and you say quick text boxes, as soon as I draw a box across my screen, it's gonna automatically pull up that text tool. And I can move this around, I can rotate it side to side, I can even change the paper so it looks like a sticky, or tap on those three dots on the three, the bars on the top, and I can also change the paper to be grid or lined, or dots. So that's a great way to make a small text um, graph if you want to add just a small one. Let's delete this out. Next up is your selection tool. So there's two ways to select free form, which is just going to let you draw however size you want. I can make that bigger. I could stretch it. I could move it around. I could change the style, duplicate it, cut, copy. I can even save it and it will put it in my stickies for later. The box is more structured, but same idea. You can do all the same things as we did before. So let's say you tend to write your name a lot and you want to save it as a sticky, it will put it in there and in just a minute we'll find it where it hides, which is in the image box. So if it's the first image and you wanna just grab an image from your camera roll, you can do that. You can add an image and click on the sticky, which is next, and these are my stickers. So there's my signature, but Notability also comes with tons of free stickers that you can add as well. If I go back to that image, I can now go to GIF or GIF, and this is going to be your GIF bank. You can add one of those. Now note that if I export this as a PDF, that's not gonna stay. I need to export it as a note. And go back here one last time and there's your other stickies. So I can select any of the colors on the bottom. I can change it to lined or dotted and I can add those in as well. Next up is the microphone. If I hit record here and I write, it's going to tie that text to the um, timing on my video. If I wanna play it back, if I hit record here and I write, you it's going along with the writing. Now you see the little hand tool. This allows me to move up and down through my note. If I'm on my pencil tool and I do that, it's gonna draw a line. So I'd have to use two fingers or switch it back to the hand tool. Arrow over and you get the last couple, the laser pointer, the ribbon, which kind of looks like a piece of washi tape, the microphone again, and the ruler, which also has a level. To get rid of the ruler, you just swipe it off your page. All right, so I brought in a document to show you why that washi tape or the little blue tape is cool. So if you're teaching something and you wanted to cover up that information, if you tap on it, it reveals what's behind it. So if you wanted to show, do a presentation in which you hid some of the information, you simply cover it up and then tap and it goes away. Your undo is the arrow back. So if I wanna undo anything, redo obviously brings it back. The three dots is where you can quick share. This will send it out as a PDF, which is gonna be important when we start sharing things to Canvas or if you wanted to email it. The three dots also brings you to the share options, which gives you all of these options as well instead of just the PDF. You can adjust your template settings, your view settings, and the information on your note here too. The two boxes lead you to the previews of all the pages in your note. So you'll see that as you write on the left here, it's gonna draw on the right as well. The three dots here allows me to add a page, cut, copy, create the template, clear the page, and delete it. I can also do that by collecting select if I want to do that to more than one page. 
I click on each page, hit those three dots, and it will say the same thing. A great tool here is your bookmark tool. If you have a long document and you want to bookmark a couple of pages, you can do that. And when you search at the top, from all pages to bookmarks. You can also search a note. So if you had a word that was either handwritten or typed, you can search for that specific word. When you're done and you want to go back to your note, you want to change the name, of course. Otherwise, they're all going to be named the, the date and the time. And I want to arrow back. And now that note is in my gallery. Well, it's in my notes, sorry, in my notes folder. The gallery is a great place to find some templates. So if you wanted to look through any of these, if I wanted to copy this to-do list or I wanted to bring in some stickers, any of these items, these are free. I can do the to-do list. I click on open. I click on save and use. And here it is in my to-do list. Arrow back. Now, if I go to notes, it's also there. 